adding post-processing to your games can make your games look really cool or very trippy. So that's exactly what I'm going to be showing you how to do in Godot. So let's jump right into this video. So as usual, I'm here in my test scene, and to do this in Godot, it's actually quite simple. If you want to add post-processing, you simply want to select your main node. So in this case, we have a 3D scene. So I'm selecting my main node, and I'm doing Control A, and then we're going to add a World Environment node. Now we're currently getting a warning here, and that's because in the inspector, we want to actually set the environment. So we could click and drag the default world environment .tress, which is available to us by default when we create a new project, or we can create a new one. And that's what we're going to do here. So in the inspector environment empty, we want to click on new environment. And as you notice, everything goes dark. We don't actually have a background now. So to actually add a background, we want to click on environment. And here are all our post-processing features. Now I'm only going to go over some of the options here, not all of them, because this video would be super long. So for example, the background is just that. So currently the mode is set to clear color. If we want to choose a background color, we can change it to custom color and then change the color here to, for example, red. So if I zoom out, now we have a red background. It's that simple. And then we have other options such as skies, color sky, canvas keep, camera keep. Uh, canvas is more for 2D and then the sky here is what we normally see so let's select that. Now we don't actually have a sky right now. Uh, we only have a pitch void, uh, pitch black void and to actually add a sky we want to click on empty here and then normally we are going to do new procedural sky. So now we actually see our scene, how it would be normally when we create a new 3D scene. So this would be kind of like your default view when you create a new 3D scene. If we want to uh, actually modify the sky, we can click on procedural sky here and it will show us more options such as a drop down for sky where we can adjust the color. So if I zoom out and change the top color here, for example, to something really weird like green. Now we have a sky where the top is green and then the horizon color, we can change it to something like blue. And now we have a blue horizon line. And then this curve pretty much adjusts how fast it transitions between these two colors. So the blending between those two colors essentially. And then we have an energy option as well, which we can uh, adjust here, but you don't want to adjust it too much. Otherwise you will overexpose your scene like this. So just adjust this uh, by a small amount, not by a massive amount. Then we have ground options. So same thing, we can change the color of the ground, the horizon color, for example, like this. We have curves to blend between these those two colors, energy. We have an option to change the color of the sun. So for example, if I change the color here, now we have a red sun. The latitude is how high in the sky the sun is, essentially. So if we increase this, the sun goes higher in the sky, and if we decrease it, it goes lower in the sky. Latitude longitude is the position or direction of the sun essentially so if we move this as you can see it starts moving around our screen the direction at least uh, you can slightly see it uh, it's lagging a little bit but there we go and it is moving as you can see and then angle min is pretty much kind of like the size of our sun so if we increase this, it gets bigger. Uh, if you actually hover over the property, it actually tells you more details. So distances from the sun where it goes from solid to the starting fade. We also have angle max. You can hover over it with, to find out what it does. Curve is the blend between these two values, the angle min and the angle max. And then you also have an energy. So you inc increase the energy of the sun. Um, so those are some of the options there. You have ambient light options. So let's say we change it to yellow. Now we actually don't see any yellow in our scene. Uh, well, we slightly see it, uh, but if we want to have it be more distinguishable. We can change the sky contribution here, which is the amount of light that the sky brings to the scene. We can lower that down and we can start seeing that our ambient light here actually has more of an effect. So if we actually increase the energy as well. As you can see now we have a yellow hue in our scene. So that's ambient light. We also have fog, which we can enable and we have various options here. So for example, we can change the color of the fog like so. So now we have a purplish fog. You can't really see it because we don't have too much fog in our scene. It's not that thick. So we can reduce the depth begin here, which is the fog step starting distance from the camera. And now we have super dense fog. We can also modify the depth end, which is the, uh, the fog depth and distance from the camera. 
So you can adjust these values depending on how thick your fog, uh, how thick of a fog you want in your scene. And there's many other options you can play with as well. Then there's tone map. So by default, it's set to linear. You can change it to Reinhard, uh, filmic. Uh, ACES. Uh, so these are various options available to you. You can change it to whichever one you prefer for your game. Uh, so just play around with it and see which one you like best. Then we have exposure. So just, you know, change that at uh, however you want. And we have other options as well, such as other exposure, SS reflections, SSAO, which is essentially the screen space and be an inclusion effect, which you can enable and that has all these different options, which you can do the same for audio exposure and SSS reflections as well. There's the OFR blur. So if we enable this, it's basically if we want a blur uh, far in our scene. So if we increase this, it's a blur that happens far away from our camera basically so it's true enables the depth of field far blur effect uh, so we can change the distance the transition between no blur and blur so how quickly it transitions between no blur and blur and the actual amount of the blur and then we have the quality of the blur same options for the near blur as well so you can find and play around with those lastly we have glow and adjustment so the glow is pretty much your bloom so if we turn this on we can change things like the intensity here, lower the intensity a bit, lower the strength a bit, up the bloom, and then we can change the blend mode to something like additive, and now we have like a lot of bloom in our scene, uh, as you can see here. So yeah, our scene's pretty uh, trippy. I went a lot, uh, very overboard I would say, with the post-processing here, but these are a few of the options you have. And then we also, like I said, still have uh, adjustments here so we can enable that. And that's stuff like brightness, contrast, and saturation. So for example, if I change the kind of saturation here, increases the saturation of our colors, and now it's even more trippy. So yeah, I encourage you guys to actually play around with these options to see what best uh, works for your game and see if you can come up with any cool uh, post-processing that will make your games look awesome. So with that said, that does it for this video. So hopefully you liked the video and if you did, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful day.